Hi, this is Greg Kulowick with EdTech Teacher, and this is a quick tutorial on how to use Poll Everywhere. After you make your account and you sign in, simply click on My Polls in the top right hand corner, and you'll see a list of every poll that you've created. It's kind of like an inbox for your email account. To make a new poll, simply create on, click on Create Poll in the top left hand corner, and you have three choices a multiple choice poll, a free text poll, and a goal poll. We'll start this tutorial with making a multiple choice poll. The first thing you have to do is type in the question that you'll be asking your class. And as a test, we'll just do this is a test poll to demonstrate how to make a multiple choice poll. And then you fill in the different options you want your students to be able to choose from. By default, Poll Everywhere will give you three choices, but you can easily create additional options. I've made polls with up to 10 different options that students can pick from. When you've done inputting all the options, simply click on Save the New Poll. If you notice in the top right hand corner, there's one important feature, and it determines how many times students can vote via text message. Oftentimes, you'll want students to be able to vote as many times as they like, as not everyone in your class will have a cell phone with a text plan. You also want to make sure they'll get no response. And also, you might want to open up the option to vote via poll4.com if students are using smartphones and being uh, able to go online. When you're done adjusting your settings in the top right hand corner, just save the poll. Once you click Save, the poll will automatically pop up for display in your classroom. Once the poll is displayed, you can instruct students on how to vote. They simply have the phone number there of 37607, and it might be different depending on your area. And then to respond, they pick the code that's associated with the response type and send that in. Oftentimes when I use polls in class, I will hide the results as they're coming in as to not influence the way students will vote, and then I will reveal them afterwards. You can also choose to make the poll go full screen. Hit escape to return back to your normal view. In the top right hand corner, you can also easily delete the results if you want to use the same poll over and over again. Or if you want to keep the results, you can click on copy in the top right hand corner. And you notice poll everywhere will automatically title it with copy one. I'll often change that name to second period class or third period class and save a copy. Therefore, my results for the initial poll aren't lost and I can keep reusing that same poll over and over again. You'll see once I made the copy and hit save, now the name of this poll when it pops up will be second period class with the same poll title or question and the same options. When you're done using that poll, if you click on my polls in the top left again, you'll be brought back to your inbox. And here's where you can deal with any of the previous questions you used. If you scroll over a poll, if you notice off to the right, you have the option to turn off that poll or make the poll active again. You can also delete a poll and you'll get a confirmation box to say, yes, I would like to delete that poll if you want to get rid of it. You can edit the poll, which will allow you go in and make any changes. If you realized you made a mistake on one of the options, you can easily edit and then save again with your updated edits. And you can also make a copy from that inbox setting as well. And as you can see right here, here's the changes that I made in that simple edit of my previous poll. So now how do we use Poll Everywhere in the classroom? A great way is just to project the results and have them come in live. So I can project this poll to my class and have the students vote in. And as the, poll, as the votes come in, they see live feedback and the bar graph pop up right in front of them. As different students in the class respond, everyone can see how the class is voting. I'm actually voting on this poll live myself so you can see what it looks like to watch the results populate in the poll as it typically would in your classroom. Using Poll Everywhere on this method may influence your students to vote a certain way, but there's a solution for that. In the top right hand corner, if you scroll over the poll, you can choose the Show Instructions option. 
If you click on that, all the students will see is their voting option and then the code they need to send to. In the bottom right hand corner, the only thing they will see is the total results as they pop in. Right now you can see it's three and as the new results come in, it quickly changes to four. And as another student may vote, that total number will jump to five. This is a great tool to use because as the students are voting, they won't be influenced by their classmates decision. This is great if you're trying to use poll everywhere as a formative assessment. You can then have students predict what they think the outcome will be. Simply scroll back over the show chart option to show what the actual results are. And then you can quickly display what the results for the poll actually were. Students are often very likely to debate and argue their perspective when this method is used using poll everywhere. All right, so now that we know how to use polls and create polls for class, one of the really great features that Poll Everywhere has recently added is the grouping feature of polls that you have in your inbox. Oftentimes, if you use Poll Everywhere often, you'll end up with so many polls that it's hard to keep track. So all you have to do is decide which polls you want to group together and simply check off the little box next to the poll when you're done deciding which polls you would like grouped together, and you can see I've checked off a number of them here, then you simply click on Group. It will take a moment before the Poll Everywhere feature will recognize your new group. And when that happens, a box will pop up, giving you the choice to name your new group of polls. For this example, all of these poll questions have to do with the Holocaust, so I'll name them Holocaust Questions, and I'll save that group. Now all of those polls are grouped together and by clicking the little arrow next to the group name they all hide almost like they're hiding within that folder and now my inbox looks much neater than it did before and it's easy to keep track of my questions. So I'll do that again with another group. I'll simply click off the polls that I'd like to group together, click on group on the top of the page, and the name will pop up and I'll name these polls World War I questions. Simply click Save and all of those polls will be grouped together and I can hide them all within that group. Now your inbox is much neater and much easier to manage.